hey, if possible, the next time your guy comes around, can he pick that potty up? I think we're good without it now. Yes, absolutely. I'll put it on the pickup list. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Have yep. a good day. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye. That's going to save us 85 bucks a month. Guys, we're struggling to keep the house warm. It's been getting into the low 20s at night already. We, we've seen 22 and 21 degrees the last couple of nights. This is really the test that I've been wanting to do. And we've talked about doing a video just on whether or not we could heat the whole house with one 8,000 watt heater. I think the answer is yes, but we're still working on it. Of course, if you've been following us for a while, you know that we haven't done any of the, the ceiling around the windows and the doors. They're just caulked around the nail fin. And uh, our man doors, they're not the permanent man doors. Those are just temporary. We put them in there just kind of give us some level of security and to keep the dust and stuff out of the house. We did order the sill pans for the permanent doors. Those should be here probably within a week or a little bit more maybe. And then we've got, of course, the opening around the garage door, which a lot of people have noticed and said, hey, what are you gonna do about that? And the simple answer is we've just never dealt with it. We, we wanted the garage doors installed for the same reason. We just needed the dust and the wind to stop blowing junk in the garage. So we had those installed, even though we didn't have time to get them trimmed out. But last night, <laughs> I don't know, friend of ours, good friend of ours, uh, he's been interested in how the heater's doing for good reason. And I said, man, we're struggling. And he came back and said, hey, why don't you just stick some backer rod around the doors? And I thought, I don't know. That's a really great idea. So if you're not familiar with this, there's a product at most building supply stores called backer rod. And it's a foam, a piece of foam that's in a circle. And usually it just comes in a continuous roll and it's available in many different sizes. And it's kind of a high, high density foam but it's pliable and this stuff is used for all kinds of things like expansion joints or you know where you want to push something maybe that will allow a joint to move back and forth but will maintain a seal so maybe in concrete or around a window or a door or where two surfaces meet etc anyway I just used some of this to backer the joints that are in our shower surround to take up quite a bit of the space so that the caulking doesn't have to fill in this huge long deep uh, gap but it never clicked in my head that because these doors are temporary we didn't want to put foam in here we didn't want to foam them in because that would be a mess to try to clean it up and take it out but look at that guys just stick some backer rod in there duh brutally obvious right and just that one thing gained us two degrees overnight uh, in about a little over eight hours. And I can see that the house is actually up almost seven degrees in the last 12 hours. That one heater, that little 8,000 watt heater, has been maintaining about a 30 degree differential between the outside temperature and inside. So the loft, house, and garage are all staying within about one to two degrees of each other, which I find interesting. The thermometer that we have in the loft though is of course not way up in the peak of the roof, so it might be quite a bit more, quite a bit warmer way up there. But as far as like the floor level in the loft, it's about the same temperature as it is here in the house. I didn't know if all this work with these sips would be worth it. And my response to most everybody was, I don't know, let us live with it for a little, a little while. And we plan on doing a video down the road kind of talking about our experience with the installation and kind of like condensing our experience down to a single video. But this is really the point where we find out whether SIPs were worth it or not is comfort and, 
and energy efficiency and those things. Not so much like whether it's easy to build or not. One kind of peripheral benefit is with the heater over here, a lot of the heat is getting trapped in these joist bays and the net effect is it's kind of like having radiant in the floor because this is uninsulated. So this floor ends up pretty warm. And when we come up here in the evening, sometimes we have time to stretch or play with Bugaboo. And that floor is actually really comfortable. Something we didn't really think about or expect. Bathroom turned out fantastic. Two days ago, I was ready to pull my hair out, right? Fighting sheetrock mud and broken paint rollers. And we were working too late. I was putting in too many hours, we were burnt out. Uh, we've taken just a couple of days off from the house and video and just work, just kind of worked on something else. There's so much work that happens outside of the house. It, it is not our life, but it definitely takes up a very large part of our life. And of course, video is also a very big part of life for us every day. As you see, I'm holding a camera right now in my bathroom. <laughs> the good news is I think we're feeling a little bit more refreshed. So I've got a pretty crystal clear set of punch list items left to get done with the bathroom. It keeps growing though, and I'm sure that's probably normal because as we get farther, I keep seeing things that need to be done over and over. Uh, so today we have just one kind of main objective that will get us to the next step on the bathroom. That's right, electrical. We've got to get all the electrical landed in the bathroom, get everything installed, all the switches, the thermostats, the outlets, the lights, the fan, the heater, get all that done, and then get everything landed at the panel. And if we do everything right, flip the breaker, and we should have lights and fan and all that jazz going today. We also have some stuff outside, and it's a beautiful day. Uh, it's a little cold, the ground's probably already a little bit frozen, but there's a couple of things we need to get done outside that are also kind of electrically related. So that's the plan. Get all that stuff done today, and then no more pooping in the dark. So it's looking to me like the ground was actually fairly frozen. If you look at how soft this is, that tells me that the ground froze quite a bit over the last about a week or so. So hopefully this afternoon we'll warm up enough that whatever frost is in the ground will leave at least until winter starts. Unfortunately, it wasn't until after our foundation was backfilled that I learned we could access this. I think it's, I don't remember what the weight of it is, but it's a non-woven architectural fabric that we're gonna end up using for the driveway. And we're gonna use it for setting the fill on the side of the foundation that we haven't backfilled yet. I wish we would have had this way back when we did the foundation backfilling. It would have worked a lot better than the curtain drain kind of technique that we used with Tyvek. That's what they call it, is drain tile. Anyway, that'll protect it from getting sand in there. On the rare, rare, rare event, we actually even get any water in that footing drain whatsoever.
Uh, looks like it's right here. Cool. So I left myself this marker, which is of course the piece of conduit that broke, as a reminder of where it should have been. Of course I'm gonna get a bunch of dirt in it. Oh, so looks like I broke it right on the sweep. Kind of makes sense. Right on the bell. So hopefully I have a coupler I can throw in there. Then we need to stick a post here so we can bring that conduit up and tether it. Thanks love for the London fog. It's refreshing. Haven't had one of these in a long time. Do you guys remember LF30? It's been like six months since we had LF30. <laughs> that does it for now for outside tasks. I've decided because of the importance of getting this bathroom ready that I'm going to leave the post and that out at the uh, conduit that I repaired for another day. Someone might notice that I did not just use another piece of three-quarter conduit and slide it on there uh, for two reasons. One, it was actually on the sweep and the bell on the three-quarter probably would not have made it up well because it's about yay deep. And number two, I don't have any three-quarter conduit, but I grabbed a coupling kind of thinking that I broke it at the sweep. So there you go, works pretty good. Wow, we're up nine degrees since last night when I put the backer rod in. Impressive. I'm wondering if that's where we're gonna top out. I think it's gonna keep going because I think it's up four degrees since I went outside to monkey with the outside stuff. I think for now we're going to leave all the elements attached. What's nice about these little wall zonal heaters is that you can kind of adjust the power consumption rating. And this one happens to be a 240 volt, 2250 watt. Um, but if we wanted to put two heaters on a single circuit, we could do that. That's permissible on a 20 amp, 240 volt breaker. But I don't know why you'd want to reduce the current off the top of my head. I know uh, in rentals I've had in the past, I deliberately kind of depowered them so that uh, you know people couldn't hurt themselves by just overcooking the heater. 
So we'll just leave that for now. Uh, we may end up using this heater briefly to kind of aid in the heating of the house. And then later if we want to, we can take it out and pull some wires and change the, the heat output. So this is a uh, 12-2 wire. The reason we're allowed to use 12-2 on such a large appliance is because the voltage is increased to 240 volts. I guess it doesn't really matter what you would do differently on 110. What does matter is that this is permissible for 240 volt. I think what's a little bit tricky is that there actually is no neutral. It's a fully consuming appliance. The neutral, which would normally be our white wire, which would normally allow current that is unused by the appliance that's brought in by the hot wire to go back to the grid through the neutral wire. I guess in theory, power can go both directions uh, because this is kind of a circuit to the grid. If you're used to dealing with direct current, you probably don't even need this conversation, but for those who are unfamiliar, uh, alternating current does not have polarity. It does not have a positive and a negative. It has a hot and a neutral. The problem is with 240 volt self-consuming appliances like your water heater and this wall heater, there actually is no neutral. There's no route for power to go back to the grid. Both of these are actually hot. And I guess using this wire could be a little confusing. If you didn't know what you were looking at, you might think that this was a neutral wire because it's white. But this Romex, this 12-2 Romex, is actually primarily used for 110 volt, I guess, in my mind. I guess what I'm trying to show here is that these two, um, in this situation, this should be black and this should be black, if you will. That way it shows that both of these are hot. So I thought I'd stop here and kind of walk through what I've done already. Our power is actually coming in to this box. It's what's called a home run. So the power from the panel is actually these three wires. This one, this one, and one of these bare copper wires. That comes from the panel and the bathroom circuit. So this whole bathroom is on one circuit. And that's allowed, that's permissible. If we wanted to jump to another room with the same circuit of outlets, we would not then be able to run the lights and the fan and, the, and all that stuff off of the same circuit. So we could run like all the bathroom outlets, those could all be on one circuit. In this situation, it makes a lot of sense to keep this entire bathroom, the lights, the outlet, not the heater, but the fan all on one circuit. You flip the breaker, the bathroom's basically dead. So we've got our line, which is what's coming from the panel, but we're, we, and we've got it hooked to a GFI breaker. We have to do GFIs in all wet locations, in the laundry room, the bathroom, the garage, and I believe exterior. Don't quote me on that. So the way this works, we bring the power into this GFI outlet in the line side, and then we hook the rest of the bathroom in the line side. So we don't have the fan and the lights and everything GFI protected, just the outlet. So instead of hooking these wires into the load side, which would basically continue the daisy chain, which we will do later in some areas, what that allows us to do is to use this one outlet to protect a string of outlets. But these guys are like 20, 
$20 or something like that. But a regular outlet, I think is about four or five for a good one. In this bathroom, we actually have two GFI outlets, one here and the one I put over there. And the reason I did not daisy chain them is because we actually had a different issue where the one inch holes that we drilled through the framing actually were already maxed out with the, the maximum number of wire runs per hole. So it actually made more sense to do a home run from this outlet back to the panel and from that outlet back to the panel. They'll still be on the same breaker, but because I did that, they both have to be a GFI outlet. I could have used a cheaper outlet over there if I would have daisy chained from this outlet over yonder. I guess there's no right or wrong way to do it. You kind of have to look at the whole scenario to make sense of it. So then we're gonna bring line power from here over to this box. And that's where we're gonna feed the fan, which is this guy. It's set to a timer. So we'll push this button and you can turn it to 10, 20, 30, and 60 minutes. Then we have a light switch and this will be for the overhead light. And we're just bringing the uh, neutrals all into one wire nut and we're bringing all the grounds into one wire nut. And then we're just opening and closing the hot circuit. And then we have the vanity light, which is the one over the toilet. And that's basically how the circuitry will work. So we're only running one home run back to the panel. This is a home run because it's 240 volts. This is all 110. And again, we only have two hot wires. There's actually no neutral wire. So the white wire that I have wire nutted back there is actually a hot wire. And it's good for me to learn this stuff because when I'm dealing with 240 volts, I kind of have to change how my brain works. So what this thermostat is doing is opening and closing this hot leg, just one leg. This leg is already closed because I wire nutted them together. This leg gets opened and closed by the thermostat. I'm gonna get this all buttoned up and then we'll start working on getting just the two lights done. And then we're down to getting everything landed at the panel. So we've got the heater, the overhead light, which is an LED. We've got the vanity light, which is LED. Our outlets, switches, timers, thermostats. We haven't pushed that light up. I just figured I'd leave it down until we verify that everything's working correctly. Um, I did hook that light on because there's no tether or something to hold the light without it being physically attached to its base. So that leaves us with the small task of landing a few of these home run wires. So we've got five wires here, but we're not going to land all of those tonight. Uh, some of those go to the laundry area, and I think one of them actually goes all the way over to where our refrigerator is gonna go over against the east wall. So garage outlets, no. This is the bath lower outlet. So yes, we're doing that one. Laundry, no, we're not gonna do that one tonight. This should be the two other ones, right? Bathroom, yep, and bath thermostat. My plan, when I open this panel up, you'll see that there's a, a bank of, I think, 10 bays down here on the bottom, five on each side, that accept what's called a double breaker, this guy. So this, only uses one bay in the panel, but it supplies two 110 volt uh, circuits. So that'll help us to conserve room in here for the whole house. So we've already taken up a big chunk uh, with 240 volt breakers. Here a water heater, this is our ceiling heater, and then this circuit is the only one that we're actually using, which is this outlet right here. This will become part of the garage circuit. So we won't be using a lot more bays for that. So this one breaker should get us the bathroom 
and the laundry on one bay. The reason we ran these Romex wires super long is when you'll see when we open this panel that the grounding bus is clear up at the top of the panel and we have to land all the grounds up there. So even though we don't need that much hot, uh, we need that much ground. So we just, in the interest of time, run the Romex all the way down to the floor and all the way back up. Also, we have to secure or fasten these Romex inside this stud bay. We've got to come down here through the wall and come back up and fasten them to this block. And they've got to be secured, I think within 12 inches of the panel using a staple. Code says that Romex has to be supported every four and a half feet. So if we have a hole, this is considered supported for four and a half feet after that hole. So we just need basically one staple to get us down to the hole that we're gonna drill. We're probably gonna come down below that outlet and over to that block. I think that'll do it, guys. So let's go turn the power off. seems dead so that's good uh, I need to put in a three-quarter knockout So we've got our grounding bus up here, and I'm realizing I learned something just now, that you don't wanna bend these wires and run them down because all you end up doing is blocking the bus. So I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of research and kind of find out what the trick is there. What I'm realizing is I can, I can kind of bend the wire one way and then hook it into the bus, and that way it only takes up one bay. Otherwise, this is gonna be, this is just gonna be bad. The good news is I can always move these grounding wires down to the lower part of the bus, but uh, let's see. We got the bathroom circuit hooked up and we're gonna use the top one for that. So that's gonna be bathroom. This will be garage outlets. And this is the heater and this is going to be the bathroom heater. And again, here that confusion comes in. So this white wire normally for 110 goes to this bus down here which is called a neutral bus and it's the neutral wire coming in from the the um, utility and then we have two hots we have a red and a black well i'm 100 percent sure but i guess there's like that tenth of a percent that i'm not sure that we're allowed to do this with this color of wire i guess it's implied that this is 240 volts therefore these are both hot and this is not a neutral, but I guess when we get inspected, we'll find out whether that's permissible or not. Uh, so I've got everything secured. I'm not gonna staple that for now because I wanna join, well, you know what? I might just throw a staple in there just because it looks nice and tidy. Get that stapled. This strain relief is active. We've got all of our wires routed. I'm trying my best to keep this panel tidy, even though I don't really know what that means. I'm not really sure why I ran a mile of extra wire up here. That makes no sense to me. I guess maybe I was thinking, I don't really know. 
so why better to have extra than not enough but i'm sure i can come back later and cut these to the length we need and make this whole thing a lot more tidy and there's 240 there's the bathroom i ran both of those home runs for the bathroom outlets into this single breaker and i understand that these may not be rated for two wires going into the breaker so we may actually if we when we get inspected he may call us on that he may not we may have to run a single wire out of the breaker and then wire nut that single wire to the two wires creating a single wire going into this breaker just because this breaker i don't think it's rated for two number number 12s details right details All right, breakers going on. Let's make sure these are all turned off, turned down. <clears throat> all right, let's start with, oops, <laughs> forgot to knock out for the breakers. That's why the panel didn't want to go on. That's better. <laughs> So let's start with something known, like the garage lights. Okay, we've got power. Let's go to the heater. I heard it beep, and let's flip the bathroom on here. And let's flip the heater on. We got lights on this GFI. We got lights on that GFI. And we've got the fan here. So let's start with the first light. This should be the vanity light. And then this should be the overhead light. Uh, this should be the fan. Hot diggity dog. And then this should be the heater. Oh yeah, it's putting out good heat. Alright, and we're going to leave this breaker off. This is going to go to the laundry. We'll work on that. And we've got to get a light in this mechanical room at some point. And then we're going to work on the garage outlets. So lots of work left to go here. Um, let's go ahead and turn our water heater on. Two, three. Our panel is fully live. What do we have that plugs into an outlet? Huh. Uh, do you want to help me test something? Sure. Do you want to unplug this heater and then we'll plug it in the bathroom and see if it works? Okay. Oh, wow. This looks incredible. Oh my gosh. No. Right, so let's hit the reset on the GFI. Push it all the way in. Yes. So Two heaters, that's me, nice. Let's, let's talk talk it. Hold that's on, let's, 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 let's unplug this. <laughs> what was I For thinking? Real? No. It's okay. Good. And then turn the wow, knob up. Wow, that feels better than the RV heater. I know, right? That's amazing. Guys, if you don't Bunch get videos video for a while, here. right? Or, if we haven't seen video editing for a while, let's check the bathroom. Wow, that looks so good. And look. turn the dial up. Oh, yeah. Cool, okay. So we got power. Um, so Rat let's turn toss. that one off and unplug it. And then we'll not let your dad see that you pulled on the cord, not the really? plug, because your dad will lose it. Really? Yeah. And then let's try this one. Here she is. We got power. Unreal. By doing electrical, I learned something about sheetrock. I learned that you have to be like right to the box because these cover plates suck. Yeah, like this one is literally like the size of the box. Uh, this see? this isn't even like it's the most ridiculously small cover. Like it doesn't even have hmm. like it doesn't have any forgiveness at all. On this one, I know we plan to trim this yeah. out. We can get a large one of these, large one of those. So that'll solve that, and then we need to get a large one for that one. The heater's fine, and then I don't know what to do about this, but I think the big lesson here is when we sheetrock, you've got to tape tight. And I didn't, I didn't know that. Like, I, I didn't know. I figured, man, I'd give her, get her close, like half right. an inch, right? Every, everyone's always telling us, quit being so anal. Right, exactly. And here I went cowboy on the sheetrock, and guess what? Bit me in the butt. Yep. There is a way to fix that, but it's not fast. My thinking is I'd rather have power in here and I can go back later and do mm -hmm. surgery on that stuff because it's a matter of just pulling the covers off. And we have power! Very nice. Good in job. In the bathroom. Very nice. Heck yeah.
Bugaboo, are you over here? Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Is this your new home? You sure do like this chair. Do you remember this chair? We brought it with us. Do you remember sleeping on this when we came here? Bye, Potty. Thanks for putting up with our business.